what a night Friday night was for Ohio University. The Bobcats now just one win away from advancing to the Sweet 16 and joining the Buckeyes in that company. Our man Greg Miller with more from Nashville. Oh, how Bobcat fans might still be basking in the glow of last night's win, but the team has moved on from that victory. Head coach John Gross applying his 24 hour rule and actually taking it to another level. Coach handled it by taking our phones last night for the first time in, uh, for the first time in a while. So, uh, you know, first time ever, really. I knew from my experience two years ago how much their phones were going to be buzzing, buzzing and, you know, Twitter and Facebook and MySpace and emails and all that stuff, and that's great. But they can get back to those after we, you know, after we finish playing. Bobcats will play again on Sunday here in Nashville. 7-10 tip-off for that game with South Florida. Coming up later on Wall to Wall Sports, we'll break down the Bobcats and the Bulls and tell you why this will be a complete 180 from that Michigan game for Ohio. With the Bobcats in Nashville, Greg Miller, 10 TV Sports. You know all that stands between Ohio. I bet you all that stands between us and the pizza, but uh, well, three uh, hours stands yeah. between us and the pizza. Right. All that stands between us, uh, the Ohio Bobcats, and the Sweet 16 is South Florida. That ain't bad. No, and uh, they have been on a roll, no question about it. Matter of fact, the uh, Bobcats playing in their second round game tomorrow over in Nashville. Our Greg Miller's with the team and has us covered. It will be the 13 seed Ohio and the 12 seed South Florida for a trip to the Sweet 16 on Sunday here in Nashville. Now the double digit matchup in the third round should not really be that stunning. It's the sixth time that's happened since 2008. Ohio back on the practice floor today. Game planning for a South Florida team that John Gross says is a 180 of Michigan. USF a big physical team that loves to grind you down on defense. In Friday's win over Temple, the Bulls held their 12th straight opponent to less than 60 points. We've got to find a way to, you know, survive in advance and play and adapt and whatever's needed tomorrow. We need to be willing to do that on a possession by possession basis to give us the best chance to win. While defense is the Bulls calling card, it is also Ohio's. The Bobcats are top five in the nation in steals and turnover margin. USF has been sloppy at times with the ball, averaging over 13 turnovers a game. So Ohio is hoping they can create turnovers and push the tempo on USF. That's kind of our bread and butter. You know, we got guys that, that are really tough, uh, really uh, hard nosed. Uh, and, you know, that, that's part of the reason why our defense has, has been uh, as good as it has been. Many will label Ohio as a Cinderella in this game with their MAC background, but just because USF is a Big East team, don't be fooled. The Bulls have won only two NCAA tournament games in their history. Both happened this week. With that being said, the Bobcats are well aware of what's at stake. That's what we're trying to set the, you know, set the standard here at Ohio. You know, we, we want to be, you know, known to win. So, you know, we want to be expected to win a ball game. So, it, it's not like a, you know, a, a pressure on us or anything like that. We're just gonna come out and play, and, uh, you know, hopefully we're the best team tomorrow night. A couple of things to keep your eye on. USF will be playing their third game in just six days, so fatigue could play a role in Sunday's game. Also, Bobcat fans should recognize Bulls head coach Stan Heath, the same Stan Heath who led Kent State to the MAC title and the Elite Eight back in 2002. Bobcats trying to become the first MAC team to make the Sweet 16 since that Golden Flash team did it 10 years ago. Tip time set for 7:10 here in Nashville with the Bobcats. Greg Miller, 10 TV Sports. Hello, I'm Dom Tavari in the grill getting ready for wall to wall sports right now. Let's talk some sports. The Bobcats of Ohio University are heading to St. Louis in the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament to Nashville. We go and OU taking on the Bulls of South Florida and what a game this one turned out to be second half Bobcats down to the catch fire Walter off it hits the three pointer to give the cats the one point lead. Then it's Nick Kellogg with the three and Ohio led by four and they're going to keep it going. Walter off it the drive and the lead was eight all part of a 10 0 run off it led all scores with 21 points late in the game cats up by five DJ Cooper beats the shot clock he finished with 19 points as Ohio University goes on to win 62 56 off to the sweet 16 for the first time since 1964 our Greg Miller was at tonight's game joins us from Nashville with more on those Bobcats at the half the Ohio Bobcats found themselves against all odds down six points to a team that prided themselves on defense and had been 17 and one when leading at the half. But the Bobcats flipped the script in the second half, took things over, and became the first team to score over 60 points against USF in 12 games. In the end, 
It led Ohio to a 62-56 win and their first trip to the Sweet 16 in the modern era. I think our guys think pretty highly of themselves defensively and want to show, you know, the country that we can guard as well. I give credit to Coach Girls and Coach Staff and my teammates out here for a great effort and we're really coming together before eyes as a, as a not a good team but a great team. But Coach Gross, you know, he, he always tell me never settle. Uh, you know, sometimes I settle too much. But I just tried to attack, you know, find my teammates and uh, make plays. Cooper and Offit made a lot of plays, combining for 40 of the Cats' 62 points. But a lot of other players made huge impacts, including a couple kids from Columbus. More on their nights coming up on Wall to Wall Sports. Until then, in Nashville with the Bobcats, Greg Miller, 10 TV Sports. And welcome back to Wall to Wall Sports. Ohio University heading to the Sweet 16, and we can now give you the lowdown. They will play North Carolina. On Friday in St. Louis, tip-off is set for 747. The Bobcats beating South Florida tonight to earn the right into the Sweet 16. Our Greg Miller was there and has us covered. Well, one of Walter Offit's last games in an Ohio State Buckeye uniform came against North Carolina in 2009. Thanks to his efforts tonight, Offit will get another shot at the Tar Heels in the Sweet 16. Offit scored 21 big points, 13 in the second half, in Ohio's 62-56 win over South Florida. I thought the biggest thing that happened to start the second half is Offit banged some shots. He made some shots, and it kind of gave our guys some confidence, the other players. For most good players, if you hit your first shot, that means you're pretty much going to have a, a good a good night and that's what happened unfortunate to hit some open shots to help my team. DJ Cooper was equally tough hitting for 19 points including this one with the shot clock winding down late to put Ohio up 58-51. So I just tried to attack you know uh, I just st I stepped up and you know knocked, knocked it down. Every game he hits a crazy shot or does something crazy that makes you just say dang how, how do you do that but he does it in big time games all the time. Also not surprising was the contributions of Columbus native Stevie Taylor and Nick Kellogg. Taylor had a big momentum swinging steal and layup in the second half while Kellogg scored nine big second half points including two crucial three pointers. We obviously wouldn't be in this situation without him. He made some big shots there uh, in the second half that I thought really springboarded us to a two or three possession lead and allowed us to close it out. While the offense became the first team since early February to score over 60 points against USF, it was the Bobcat defense that sealed the deal, holding the Bulls to only two field goals over the final seven plus minutes. Last two games are, you know, prime examples of why why we hang our hat on defense. Um, because, you know, sometimes if shots aren't falling, um, if we're not rebounding and particularly well, you know, we can always go back to, you know, getting stops. And the Bobcats got plenty of them. An amazing defensive effort in the second half. Next up now, a trip to the Sweet 16 in St. Louis to face the number one seed, North Carolina. It's the first time the Heels and Bobcats have met since 2002 when Ohio won down at the Dean Dome. The rematch is Friday. It should be a lot of fun. We will be there in St. Louis. That's going to wrap up our coverage here in the Music City. We'll see you in St. Louis with the Bobcats. Craig Miller. 10 TV Sports. We are also in St. Louis and Columbus in St. Louis. Our man Greg Miller with Ohio. Hey, Bo, welcome here to downtown St. Louis, Edward Jones Dome, where this weekend they will play host to the Midwest Regionals. Ohio Bobcats here. They arrived in town today just a little after lunchtime. Headed over to St. Louis University for about a two-hour workout. Really, the fireworks will get underway tomorrow here in St. Louis. Media availability, press conferences, and practices. Bobcats will be the first team to hit the floor here at the Dome around noon local time. Really, Ohio, the new kids on the block here this weekend. Kansas, NC State, and, of course, North Carolina all here as well. Well, all three schools with at least one national title to their credit. The Bobcats, of course, making just their first ever trip to a Sweet 16. Coming up a little bit later in the show, we'll take you to that Ohio workout over at SLU, and we'll also hear from the Tar Heels and get their thoughts on the Bobcats as we get set for Friday's showdown. But that's going to do it for now here in St. Louis. We'll kick it back to Columbus and David Wilkinson. Thanks. You know, tomorrow night, the Buckeyes, well, they hope to do what everyone's expecting them to do by advancing to the Elite Eight. Now, the same cannot be said for John Gross's Ohio team taking on top-seeded North Carolina down in St. Louis, and that's where we find our Greg Miller covering Ohio in St. Louis. Greg, take it away. Yeah, guys, how about it? For the first time in nearly 50 years, here we are in late March, and the Ohio Bobcats are still very much alive in the NCAA tournament. 1964, the last time Ohio played in the regional round, and back then it wasn't even called the Sweet 16, but that, was, that has been what this year has been all about for Ohio, rewriting the record books, 29 wins, 
That is the most in program history. Ohio arriving in St. Louis today, headed over to St. Louis University for a two-hour afternoon practice. Bobcats will face the top seed Carolina on Friday. Now, all postseason, Bobcat head coach John Gross has talked about adaptability, and that's what Ohio will need to do Friday. UNC, one of the biggest front lines in the country. Ohio was outsized in that win over South Florida, but Carolina is a completely different story. They're so big and they're athletic. I think a big key is we got to do a great job blocking out. We got to get to them, and get to them first, and not let them get us pinned where they get advantages uh, on, on glass situations. You know, they already are probably going to win most of the jumping contest and the size contest. So we've got to be really disciplined with our blocking out. Now, while UNC might have the advantage in the post, Ohio might have it at the guard spot. UNC point guard Kendall Marshall questionable to play Friday after wrist surgery on Monday, and that gives Ohio at the, the edge with the way of DJ Cooper and Walter Offit. They've been playing lights out. 40 of the 62 points in Ohio's win over USF, not to mention their ability on defense, and that is what UNC has noticed the most. I think from here on out, I think you run into a lot of teams that uh, are great defensively, I know. Um, Ohio's, they love, I think the guards are very good at getting out pressuring, and uh, so it's something I, I expect to see that. Um, I mean, whether it's full court or half court, I think we're going to see a lot of pressure trying to get us out of our offense and uh, trying to attack that position. Bob Katz and Tar Heels met 10 years ago in Chapel Hill. Ohio won that game. If they can make it two in a row against Carolina, this magical run will continue. Tip time Friday at 745 here in St. Louis. That's going to wrap up our coverage for now. Guys, we'll send it back to you in Boston. Well, the state of Ohio, as noted, has the most teams ever in a Sweet 16. One of them tried on the glass slipper, and it fits. Here's Greg Miller with this year's Cinderella, Ohio U. St. Louis, the site of Friday's Sweet 16 matchup between the Ohio Bobcats and the number one seed, North Carolina. Cats getting a workout in on campus over at St. Louis University before moving to a dome setting on Thursday. It will be the team's first game in a dome. Head coach John Gross with a familiar thought when it comes to playing in a dome. The goal is still 10 feet. Free throw line's 15. The court's still the same size, and you got to kind of like the old Gene Hackman Hoosiers deal. And uh, tape measure out. Tape measure out and you still got to play. Playing still a question mark for UNC point guard Kendall Marshall. He did have a cast removed from his injured wrist on Wednesday. We will get our first look at Marshall and the Heels on Thursday afternoon over at the Dome. In St. Louis with the Bobcats, Greg Miller. 10 TV sports. Well, the Buckeyes Bearcats not alone in representing Ohio in the Sweet 16. So are Xavier and Ohio University. 10 TV's Greg Miller is with the Bobcats tonight in St. Louis. Welcome to downtown St. Louis, where on Friday the Ohio Bobcats will meet North Carolina in the Sweet 16. Cats arriving in town this afternoon to a rock star like welcome at their team hotel. No surprise the attention they are getting being the lowest seed remaining in the tournament. We asked the guys if focus has been hard to keep. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. We're getting a lot, of, obviously, we're getting a lot of media exposure for uh, different guys and different players and obviously our university. So uh, uh, we have to remain humble in the process uh, as well, but we have to get ready for North Carolina and get ready to win this game. Bobcats also holding a practice this afternoon. We will take you to that practice coming up a little bit later in sports. In St. Louis with the Bobcats, Greg Miller, 10 TV Sports. Oh, the State, they will take the court tonight in just over four hours, of course, to face the Cincinnati Bearcats. But let's not forget the mighty Bobcats of Ohio University. They will play tomorrow against number one ranked North Carolina. 10 TV's Greg Miller is live in St. Louis tonight where the Bobcats got a rock star like welcome when they arrived in the show me states. Greg. I, I like it, Andrew. The mighty Bobcats. You got that right there. The long line of national exposure continuing for those mighty Bobcats. This is the cover of the uh, USA Today sports section today. Bobcats front and center. Just another, as we said, in a long line of great national exposure this team has gotten thanks to this Sweet 16 run. But today it was back to work for the Cats. Ohio, the first team on the floor at the Edward Jones Dome, holding their public practice. Bobcats looking to find that shooting touch in the cavernous dome. It was okay. We've been shooting. We uh, had shooting around. We played in uh, Nashville, so it's just the same as that. So we've, uh, we feel pretty comfortable in this setting right now. We're just uh, coming in with a lot of confidence. Bobcats, no doubt, the new kids on the block here. UNC, NC State, Kansas here as well. Those three schools with a combined 10 national championships. Ohio, well, they're making their first ever Sweet 16 appearance. 
turns. Whenever you're the underdog or whatever you want to call it, you, you enjoy being able to, you know, prove to people that you can play on the next level or, you know, on the national stage. Ohio just the fifth 13 seed to ever advance to the Sweet 16, trying to become the first to move on to the Elite Eight. We're not just happy to be here. You know, we don't. We're not here for moral victories. We're not here just to compete. You know, we think we can, you know, get on the court and play with these teams. Well, if the Bobcats are to keep this magical run alive, they're going to have to find a way to topple the Tar Heels tomorrow night. Coming up a little bit later in sports at 6 o'clock, we'll have the latest on UNC injured point guard Kendall Marshall. It's been a big storyline in the Tar Heel Nation, the latest on him and much more on the Bobcats. We're live in St. Louis with Ohio. Greg Miller, 10 TV Sports. Oh, the madness. Greg, thanks a lot. Yeah, I'd like to see him knock down 32. The Bobcats of Ohio also gearing up for the Sweet 16. Our Greg Miller is traveling with the team. He joins us live, with, live from St. Louis with more on those cats, Greg. Yeah, Don, the big, the big story here in St. Louis has been Tar Heel point guard Kendall Marshall. Will he play tomorrow night? Roy Williams, the head coach in North Carolina, saying today he'd be surprised considering Marshall can't even brush his teeth right now. So take that as you will. This is video of Marshall today at practice, merely a spectator wearing that soft cast on his right hand. He is left-handed, but either way, it doesn't look good for Marshall tomorrow night. I feel bad for the kid. You know, I wish he was completely healthy. I hope the surgery went well. I hope he can play tomorrow. I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. Um, but obviously, you, you, they're, they're a different team potentially without him. Now, if he can't go, UNC will turn to seldom used freshman Stillman White at the point. That could be good news for Bobcat guard DJ Cooper. Tip time tomorrow night, 745. We're live in St. Louis with the Bobcats. Greg Miller, 10 TV. Dom, we'll go back to you. And guess what? With the Ohio University Bobcats as well. Got to love them this morning. Well, it could be an uphill battle, though, for the green and white. They are facing the top seed North Carolina Tar Heels, and this takes place tonight. 10 TV's Greg Miller continues our March Madness team coverage. He joins us from the road in St. Louis. We'll call them a Cinderella, call it David versus Goliath, call it what you want, but the bottom line is the Ohio Bobcats are just two wins away from a Final Four. Tonight they go for the first of those two wins against North Carolina. The Tar Heels are the number one seed and are one of college basketball's blue bloods, but that doesn't intimidate the Bobcats. Obviously, you know, the smaller team coming from the MAC and, and not, not being here that often, but I think, I think we're, we're a good team and we've shown that all year. Bobcats will need to show even more on Friday night to topple the Tar Heels, UNC possessing one of the biggest and best front lines in all of college basketball. Obviously, they're going to have a size advantage, but we're going to open the floor up and spread the floor, and, and uh, you know, hopefully we can create some mismatches ourselves. One mismatch the Bobcats do have in their favor is at point guard. Look for DJ Cooper to exploit the freshman Stillman White, who is filling in for injured Tar Heel starter Kendall Marshall. Cooper has been fantastic in this tournament. He and his teammates will need to be if they're going to beat North Carolina tonight. Tip time set for 745 here in St. Louis with the Bobcats. Greg Miller, 10 TV Sports. Jerry, first the Buckeyes, they've made it to the Elite Eight in March Madness. Now it is Ohio University's turn, but it's not going to be easy. 10 TV Sports anchor Greg Miller is live in St. Louis for us right now and Greg quite the matchup against North Carolina tonight. Yeah, it's game day here in St. Louis for the Bobcat Nation. Cats and Tar Heels tipping off in less than three hours at the Edward Jones Dome here behind me. It's been quite a run. John Gross has led his team on not just these last few weeks, but quite honestly, these last few years. 29 wins this season, three NCAA tournament wins and counting now. John Gross is becoming quite a popular man, not just with Bobcat Nation, but with colleges looking for new head coaches. His name has already been linked to job openings at Nebraska and at Illinois. And that's just honestly the nature of the beast when it comes to being a coach at a mid-major level. And that's something that Ohio AD Jim Schaus understands. We certainly can't control about things that are out of our control um, and understand that successful coaches are going to have interest. Uh, but again, our focus right now is the game on Friday, and our focus is, is, is having John Gross as our coach for many years to come and, and to continue to build our program. Well, Gross contends he has no interest in leaving Ohio at this time, and that sits just fine with Bobcat Nation. He maintains his focus is on North Carolina tonight, and that's where our focus will be a little bit later. We'll rejoin you at 6 o'clock to break down tonight's matchup. Tip-off for the Bobcats and Tar Heels set for just after 745 here in St. Louis. We're live with the Bobcats. Greg Miller, 10 TV Sports. All right, Greg, thanks. Under two hours now until the Ohio Bobcats hope to keep the magic alive in the NCAA tournament. 10 TV Sports reporter Greg Miller is live in St. Louis where the team is preparing to play and countdown is on, Greg. Yeah, that's right. We are just a matter of hours away and 
The big question is, how long will that magic carpet ride last? Bobcats and heels going here at the Edward Jones Dome for a trip to the Elite Eight. And what a ride it's been for the Cats, but it's no question they are the decisive underdogs tonight. But you know what? So was George Mason a few years back. So was Butler the last two years, and so was VCU last year. Maybe this is the year that the magic wand touches down on Ohio. Bobcats know they're facing an uphill battle tonight, but it's one they're excited about I don't about think it's too intimidating, you know. Um, obviously, you know, we're, we've got a lot of confidence right now, uh, you know, and we believe we can play with anybody on the court. And I think we've proved that these last couple weeks, uh, you know, throughout the MAC tournament uh, and throughout the first round of the NCAA. Whenever you're the underdog or whatever you want to call it, you, you enjoy being able to, you know, prove to people that you can play on the next level or, you know, on the national stage. Well, the stage gets no bigger than tonight. Just how do the Bobcats beat the Tar Heels? We'll try to figure that out coming up later in sports. John Gross gives us his biggest key to victory. All that a little bit later. We're live in St. Louis with the Cats. Greg Miller, 10 TV Sports. Thanks, Greg. Buckeyes in the Elite Eight. The Bobcats of Ohio trying to join them. We go to St. Louis now for Greg Miller and more on their journey. Yeah, Bo, no question. The odds are certainly stacked against the Bobcats. No 13 seed has ever made the Elite Eight. North Carolina. Well, they've won their last 10 straight games in the Sweet 16. Then there's the on-the-court disparity between the two. Carolina, the much bigger team. On offense, Ohio plans on trying to spread the court and keep their big men outside the paint. That sure becomes harder when Ohio is on defense. The Heels make a living on the offensive glass, something John Gross is well aware of. If you can guard them and, and do a great job defending them and then the shot goes up and they're playing shoot and fetch all night, you know, we're in trouble. You can't defend layups off of offensive rebounds. So we've got to do a great job of getting to them, blocking out. I think that'll be the key statistic in the game. Well, North Carolina is number one in the country in rebound margin. So don't expect Ohio to win that battle tonight, but if they can stay competitive, they could pull the upset here in St. Louis. A complete wrap up tonight at Wall Extra. Tip off time, 745. We're live in St. Louis with the Bobcats. Greg Miller, Bo, we'll send it back to you. Of course, the Bobcats trying to get to the Elite Eight as well. Are Greg Miller traveling with them in St. Louis? Let's go to him now. Well, Bo, certainly a stomach punch night here in St. Louis. Bobcats take top seed North Carolina all the way down to overtime before falling in OT. Ohio had their chances. There's no question about it. Let's show you how this one finished off here at the Edward Jones Dome. Walter Offit was fantastic all night. Here, the hoop and foul with Ohio down two in the final minute. Career high 26 for him. He missed the free throw. Ohio had a chance late to win it, but the desperation heat from DJ Cooper off the mark. We go to overtime in OT. Ohio can't hit a shot. Carolina would take control. And the Tar Heels go on to win. You can hear the fans behind me. North Carolina 73-65 in overtime at the half ohio shot just 22 percent was down only seven points but in a weird way you had to feel good about their chances in the second half and rightfully so no surprise ohio came out in the second half and did what they have done all season give themselves a chance to win there were a lot of plays down the stretch that decided this one and that includes walter off its missed free throw in the final seconds of regulation obviously you know it's a free throw you know it's what you know you know, I wouldn't want nobody else on the free throw line but to me and being a leader on his team, you know, taking that shot. So, obviously, you know, it's going to stick to me for a little bit. Off it was tremendous all night. His 26 points were a big reason while the Bobcats had a chance. He made big plays, and he was the reason we were in the situation we were in late to have a chance to win it. And, you know, we just, uh, like I said, just didn't make, make enough of them there at the end. I feel like if we would have just executed just one more play, um, I feel like we would have won that game. But, uh, we didn't, so we can't, we can't play the what-if game. No what-ifs when it comes to the Bobcats' character, which makes it all that much harder that this run has come to an end. Well, I just told them there's nothing I'm going to say to them that's going to stop, you know, uh, the, their disappointment at this point in time because they're competitive guys. Uh, they're proud guys. Well, if there is a silver lining to this loss tonight, it is the fact there are no seniors on this team. They're all back next year, so expectations will be sky high next year in Athens. In St. Louis with the Bobcats, Greg Miller, 10 TV Sports. Thanks so much, Greg. Certainly going to be fun to watch them next year. And happy birthday to you as well, my friend. Turning to sports news this morning, a tough loss last night for the Ohio University Bobcats in St. Louis. I didn't want to get out of bed this morning. I know it. How <laughs> tired are you this morning? <laughs> Late game. After making it all the way to the Sweet 16, the Bobcats fell to UNC in overtime. 10 TV sports reporter Greg Miller has reaction this morning from St. Louis. 
Well, the question all week here in St. Louis was, could the Ohio Bobcats battle with the big boys from the ACC? Well, it looks like Ohio did that and then some on Friday night here in St. Louis. Ohio going toe-to-toe -to -toe with North Carolina, nearly pulling off the upset of the number one seed. Ohio trying to become the first 13 seed to ever advance on to the Elite Eight. Didn't start well for the Bobcats. Reggie Bullock knocks down the three. Ohio down 16 midway through the first half. But the Cats would rally. Despite shooting just 22% in the first half, the Bobcats trimmed the lead all the way down to just seven before the break. Nick Kellogg, one of his three first half threes, 29-22, UNC at the half. Second half, Bobcats fell down, back again by 10 points. That's when they would make the run. Back-to-back -back threes from Walter Offit and another from TJ Hall cut the lead down to just one. Ohio had a lot of chances to take the lead, and finally, with just over eight minutes left, Kellogg, another triple, puts Ohio up 47-46. Ohio got up as many as four, but Harrison Barnes comes up with a four-point possession with three minutes left to tie the game back up at 57. Down two in the final 30 seconds. Ohio looked like they would finish off Carolina. Off it caps off a 26-point night with the layup and the foul to tie it, but off it unable to finish off the three-point play, and we were headed for overtime. In OT, it was all Carolina. Ohio 0 for 6 in the extra session from the floor. Tar Heels scored the first five points, and that was enough. Bobcats run comes to an end, 73-65 in overtime. Obviously, you know, it's a free throw, you know, it's what, you know, you know, I wouldn't want nobody else on the free throw line but to me and being a leader on his team, you know, taking that shot. So, obviously, you know, it's going to stick to me for a little bit. He made big plays, and he was the reason we were in the situation we were in late to have a chance to win it. And, you know, we just, uh, like I said, just didn't make, make enough of them there at the end. I feel like if we would have just executed just one more play, um, I feel like we would have won that game. But... Uh, we didn't, so we can't we can't play the what if game. Well, if there was a silver lining for the Bobcats in this loss, it's the fact that every player will be back next season. No seniors on this Bobcat roster, so expectations in Athens for next season should be sky high. With the Bobcats in St. Louis, Greg Miller, 10 TV Sports.